In this episode of Influencers, Rosewood Hotel's CEO, Sonia Chang. Hospitality has always been my passion. Uh, it's in our family blood. We have an aligned vision of really pushing boundaries in the, in the hotel industry. We are reaching levels that we've never seen before, even pre-COVID. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Influencers. I'm Andy Serwer, and welcome to our guest, Sonia Chang, CEO of the Rosewood Hotel Group. Sonia, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Andy. Thanks so much for joining us from Hong Kong. Um, you have a really fascinating job and a, a just an incredible um, hotel company with incredible properties, such as the Hotel de Crillon, the Carlisle in New York, a mansion on Turtle Creek in Dallas, Little Dicks, Silicon Valley and Sand Hill Road, all those properties. Um, having said that, there are other luxury uh, brand hotels out there as well. And I'm wondering what you think really differentiates Rosewood uh, versus some of those other uh, luxury names. So uh, Rosewood, uh, what's so special about Rosewood is uh, it's a sense of place philosophy. So uh, globally, we operate 30 properties around the world and every property has its own personality. Uh, it's uh, philosophy is to celebrate local culture, its history, um, really bringing in that sense of place into the hotel so that all our travelers that come to the hotel can experience um, uh, the beauty of that city. Um, and so every property is carefully curated uh, really personalized um, and 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 really it's a very special collection so it's not I wouldn't call it a chain um, it's really a very special collection of uh, beautiful hotels and landmark properties around the world. Given that the each one of the properties is so differentiated Sonia how do you oversee um, such a diverse group a, a portfolio like this? Well, first of all, we have an amazing team. Um, there are uh, 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 around the world, uh, they're very talented, very passionate in the hospitality business, very creative. Um, and we have an aligned vision of really pushing boundaries in the, in the hotel industry. So we take a very thoughtful approach every time we open a hotel um, and we study the market. We uh, understand what the consumers are looking for for each market. Um, and uh, we're very involved from uh, the beginning of the design process, um, understanding uh, what our target audience are looking for, curating every experience from culinary to uh, wellness to the guest experience in the room. Um, and we also, uh, uh, it's important for us to be immersed in that culture uh, and to bring in uh, those cultural experience in every touch point in, uh, throughout the journey. So we, we, we don't open that many hotels every year. Um, we uh, carefully select the properties uh, to make sure that we, uh, every property uh, uh, is really special and, and, and certainly a landmark for that destination. How many properties do you have right now and, and how many are you planning to open up, say, over the next 12 months? And what is that trajectory like versus before COVID? And we'll talk about COVID, of course, in particular, but just where does the business stand versus, say, 2019? So for the Rosa brand, we operate 30 hotels uh, around the world in 18 countries, and we've announced 24 projects uh, that are in the pipeline at the moment. Um, and uh, surprisingly, uh, while COVID uh, has a significant impact in the hospitality industry, we have experienced tremendous uh, growth. Uh, in our pipeline in the last two years. Um, uh, developers and owners uh, in the hospitality space continue to be quite confident in the outlook of the hotel industry and uh, continue to invest in hotels and, and uh, looking to partner with Rosewood in developing more Rosewoods around the world. So actually the last two years, uh, we have uh, uh, record high signings uh, uh, of new hotels in the pipeline. So take me back to March of 2020, though, and, you know, as the pandemic unfolded, how did you respond and 
How did you guys survive over, say, those two critical years? So uh, it was certainly a very challenging time. Uh, I think it was an unprecedented uh, uh, time for, for all of us in the hotel industry. Uh, we did not prepare for it. Um, and so uh, we uh, reacted very quickly. Uh, the key to addressing this crisis is to be very flexible. Um, we immediately uh, take care of our associates, number one. Uh, number two, we address uh, uh, key concerns of our consumers, our guests, um, and took a very flexible approach on the, in the hotel to make sure that all the health and hygiene standards are there. Uh, we take into considerations what uh, uh, our guests are looking forward to ensure that it's a safe and, and uh, an exclusive environment that they feel safe to, to stay in. Um, and also we reacted very quickly uh, in terms of different markets and market needs. So for example, Rose of Hong Kong, we pivoted very quickly the business to staycation. So we were the first hotel in Hong Kong to launch a staycation program because everyone in Hong Kong couldn't travel abroad. So we basically turned the hotel into an urban resort where um, we launched a kids program, a summer program where uh, uh, the local residents can use our hotel uh, as a vacation spot. And that was really successful. And we kind of led the, the uh, was an industry leader in, in implementing staycation. Um, as well, we noticed, uh, you know, during COVID, the trend of uh, consumers looking for more privacy, exclusivity. Um, so there's an uptake in staying in uh, now bigger villas. Um, we developed a uh, much more curated and personalized uh, experience in our residences, in our villas. Um, so I think the key is uh, we maintain kind of significant uh, and constant uh, communication with our team around the world so that we're able to address concerns of our associates uh, and, and the organization as well as the consumers very quickly. So I imagine you took some of those learnings and you actually kept going with those things, right? I and mean, is, is that, has that been the case? Absolutely. Uh, so I think over COVID, uh, the, the, the revelation is that some of the consumer's behavior has changed. They're more focused on uh, uh, personalized uh, experience, number one. Uh, they uh, care about their own well-being. Um, they care about lifestyle. Uh, they love to travel. They miss travel. So there's a significant pent-up demand. Um, and uh, it also allow us to discover a new territory of how do we bring Rosewood to their home. So we actually uh, uh, ramped up our digital transformation. Uh, we are uh, developing, we are pivoting our strategy of developing Rosewood to be beyond just a uh, a luxury hotel leader, but we wanted to be a comprehensive lifestyle leader where we are diversifying our portfolio. We launched Asaya uh, uh, during that time, a complete uh, holistic wellness concept that really takes care of our consumers, not just a traditional hotel spa. Uh, we launched uh, our private membership concept in Hong Kong called Kalao & Co, where it gives a safe space, exclusive space for our private members. Um, we also uh, ramp up our uh, offerings and our development on Rosewood residences. So 50% of our Rosewood portfolio has Rosewood residences. And then finally, uh, we also piloted our retail offering. So really extending our Rosewood ecosystem where we can impact people's lives and, and, and give them a curated Rosewood experience wherever they are. Well, wow, that's a lot of stuff. I mean, you probably never would have done those things, all those things, certainly not in that in that time period had it not been for COVID, right? I think that uh, COVID gave us time to take a step back and pause um, and observe how consumers are are, are behaving and how they're evolving. Um, and it accelerated some of the plans that are going to stay. Yeah. So yours is a family business your grandfather uh is was the patriarch of the family company and your father and then you joined after college and then working on wall street tell us about that journey you went to school high school in the united states then you went to harvard and um and then as i said after wall street joined what was that process like 
It was amazing. So uh, after I graduated from Harvard, I went into uh, 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 the finance industry. Uh, I went, I did a few years in investment banking and then a few years at private equity. Um, and those gave, uh, those experience was amazing. It, it gave me a very solid uh, foundation uh, in terms of how to analyze operating companies, uh, build the financial skills that I need in the future. Um, and then after, uh, I think about five years, uh, then I, I, I started uh, venturing into the hospitality business. Um, hospitality has always been my passion. Uh, it's in our family blood, as you mentioned. Uh, my grandfather and my father were uh, pioneers uh, in the luxury uh, hotel space uh, in, in Asia. They were the first one um, to develop uh, the first luxury hotel in Hong Kong. They were the first one to develop the first luxury hotel in China. Um, at one point uh, with the New World Hotels, we were one of the biggest uh, player in, in Asia at that time. And uh, it's my, my grandfather and my father always loved the, the hospitality business. And I've always been growing up uh, uh, surrounded by uh, 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 you know uh, the hotel business. Uh, we lived next door to a hotel. I used to go with my my father um, uh, when he was looking after the hotel business to to look at operations. Uh, I traveled around the world with them. Um, so uh, that's how I developed my passion. And so after uh, the finance uh, uh, experience, uh, I immediately uh, uh, ventured into the hotel business. And so. You had some background in it, but basically you were learning as you were going initially. And then when did you take the reins of the business itself? So I, I uh, joined in 2008, around 2008, 2009. And you're correct. I didn't have the traditional uh, hotel education. I didn't go to hotel school. Um, but because when I, when I joined, I was so passionate that I spent the first two years uh, really is almost a crash course in, in hotels, meeting as many people as possible in the hotel industry, different companies, um, talking to uh, a lot of, uh, 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 from, from uh, market leaders to uh, influencers, to uh, travel experts, to really understand uh, uh, what are the needs in the hotel industry? Uh, what are the offerings and what are the white space? Um, and then the, the, those first two years, the other thing I did was, uh, I knew that I, I need a very a strong management team. So I spent the first two years uh, hiring and recruiting the best talents to join my team uh, to, to be a part, to partners in, on our uh, exciting journey. Um, and then fast forward uh, in 2011, the, the key pivotal uh, point was the acquisition of Rosewood in 2011. Right. How does your family, do you guys have family meetings where you talk about all the businesses together? How does your family operate that way? Actually, we're pretty casual. Uh, my my father's a great mentor. Uh, he, he really loves the hotel business. So every time we have family dinners, uh, he will discuss with me uh, on the hotel operations, give me advice, uh, share with me his observation, uh, whenever he goes around to the hotels and and we would have you know really open discussion and, and discuss how we can improve how we can involve and how do we develop the brand right and then you have brothers who are in other businesses that are part of the family group as well right that's correct um so tell us what's going on a little bit in hong kong sonia in terms of the business environment we read so much here in the united states about changes um, and disruption, COVID, political issues. How would you describe the environment right now? Well, Hong Kong uh, recently relaxed their uh, travel restrictions uh, coming into Hong Kong on the quarantine. So that's really good news. Um, we are already seeing uh, an uptick in travel coming into Hong Kong once the restriction was lifted. I'm pretty, I'm very confident that uh, once the, the, the quarantine restrictions is lifted completely, uh, there will be a, a very quick recovery in Hong Kong. I think there's a significant pent up demand um, uh, in coming to Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is still the, uh, uh, the world's, one of the world's most important financial hub, business hub, cultural hub. Um, and uh, we're very confident in terms of Hong Kong's future and outlook, uh, and hopefully uh, the, the restrictions will relax very soon, and, and uh, we see, we'll see a, a very significant recovery. And just one more question about along those lines. I mean, you know, running a global business like this, 
Um, are you concerned about the way the world seems to be going in terms of being anti-globalists and the world being more divided up and travel being more difficult between countries because of political uh, tensions, not just COVID? Is that something you consider? I think in our, uh, our line of business, as I see the COVID with the recovery of COVID, uh, we see a significant pent up demand to travel. Um, if you look at the, the recovery path, whether it's in China, whether it's in Europe, in the US, the trend is the same. As soon as restrictions are lifted, people want to go back to uh, their what was their normal life pre-COVID. They want to see their family. They want to see their friends. They want to meet their colleagues. So what we're experiencing in our hotels are uh, a, a very quick recovery, whether it's in US or Europe and now Southeast Asia, uh, we are reaching levels that we've never seen before, even pre-COVID. Um, so I, I, I overall, I'm, I'm very confident in the, the, the hospitality space um, and its outlook. Right. And so just to follow up on that, are you kind of back to 2019 levels? Oh, we're, uh, some of our hotels are beyond 2019 levels. We have... Uh, uh, resorts in Mexico that uh, it's experiencing, uh, you know, rates and occupancy that they have never seen before since opening. So uh, people are, 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 there's a huge pent up demand. Now, on the other hand, part of the problems with this demand are twofold. One, which is labor shortages and two, supply chain. So I'd like to ask you about both of those things. And I know it may be hard to generalize about both since you are such a global business, but what about, let's just take them one at a time. What about labor shortages? How's that playing out in various markets, Sonia? So uh, we, we are experiencing uh, uh, labor challenges, I think as with uh, everyone else in the, the hotel space and travel industry. Um, however, in the last couple of months, we've able to uh, recruit the talent that we have been looking for. Um, I think that it's very important to, uh, to reintroduce the, the beauty of the hotel industry to, to, the, uh, to the talents out there. Um, I think that uh, because of COVID, they temporarily uh, left the, the, the industry, um, but a lot of them actually wanted to come back. So I think it's important to focus on building a, 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 an organization where we are um, communicating to uh, our talents that uh, this is a learning organization. What is your career path? Um, focusing on building a purpose-led organization, which the new generation of of, of talents, that's what they're looking for. Um, so really shifting focus on how do we make uh, the host, uh, hospitality industry uh, attractive again. And it all comes down to uh, people. It's all come down, uh, comes down to leadership and what are you trying to build as an organization? Um, and we'd be seeing some success. We had a little bit of a bump um, um, uh, last couple of years, but then we've seen some success in, in recruiting back the talents. And as far as supply chain goes, how is that affecting your business just in terms of being able to source everything from food to linens um, to construction materials? And is that impacting pricing? And are you seeing inflation uh, being a problem? So we, we're starting to see some rise in, in cost. In our, uh, in our properties and our hotel operations in the US and, and, and Europe, and we are addressing it. Um, I think that uh, we uh, are looking at different methods of opt optimizing our operations. Uh, the good thing is because the, the pent up demand of travel is there um, and we're seeing such a surge of, of travel uh, and rates are increasing as well. So overall, the impact currently uh, is still manageable. Right. So you have some pricing flexibility in terms of what you're able to charge. Um, shifting gears a little bit, Sonia, I want to ask you uh, about being a, a, a woman leader in the business and um, what what that's been like and if it's how singular that is and what your experience has been. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, for Rosewood, uh, I think women in the hospitality industry, we can offer very unique perspective uh, to the hospitality industry. And then I can speak 
uh, uh, for myself, uh, you know, I'm a mother of four uh, uh, at the moment, and uh, I find it very, uh, a very a tremendous experience to be in the hotel industry because, um, you know, previously uh, you would think that there's challenges of, you know, work, work and family balance. And, but what I realize is nowadays, a lot of women, uh, you know, travel with a family on vacation. Uh, there's a trend of developing, uh, you know, uh, work, blending work with leisure at the same time. Um, and for, for us women, we have a different lens in the, in the, in the hotel industry where we can uh, shed a different light that can help evolve the, um, the, the experience in, in hotels. So for example, because I have four children and I know uh, what is important to children, uh, you know, uh, the last couple of years we revamped it, we revamped our uh, children's program, which is called Rosa Explorer. Um, so previously in, in different hotels, uh, kids club are seen as of this 50 square meter room where you have some art table, you have some books, and, and that's that's the kids club to house the, the children in, in resorts. Uh, but because I have children, I have different perspective. Um, in, in Rosa Bouquet, for example, we've launched a new kids program where we built in a lot more educational experience from uh, uh, programs to learn about coral reef to a herb garden uh, so they learn about organic uh, planting uh, to tie weaving stations so it's a very uh, diverse education experience and kids love it and uh, families are going to Rosa Bouquet because we have an amazing kids program um, and I wouldn't have developed that had I not become a mother um, so I think we, we, women can really provide a different perspective to the industry. Uh, the other example I want to give you is about development of ASAYA. Um, and, 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 and when we launched the ASAYA concept, we uh, created a, a focus group with uh, a lot of women and, and talked to them about what they, their needs are um, and what they're looking for uh, that is beyond a traditional spa. So those inspirations are, are very important and critical uh, for our hotel industry to, to continue to develop and continue to evolve our concept. That's fascinating. I, I think you're also um, using data analytics uh, to personalize, ho personalize hotel stays more and more. Can you talk to us about where that's going? Yeah, so uh, I think it's very important that we recognize our consumers' behavior, our guest behavior uh, on a regular basis. So we, we are building a, a very strong CRM program uh, globally for our hotels where uh, we are able to understand our uh, customers' need in advance and, and so that our uh, approach and our service approach is much more intuitive. Uh, we're building a data lake uh, where we are capturing these data and allowing our uh, associates at the property to provide those experience in a much more personal uh, way. Hmm. And what about sustainability? Is that important to you? And how is that manifested both from an operational standpoint, Sonia, and also maybe from the standpoint of something that the guests might experience? Yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, sustainability is very important to us. Uh, we have just launched our social impact mission, in fact, uh, which is called Rosa Impact. And the vision really covers how we are going to support community as well as play our part in uh, protecting the planet. Um, and how we have been doing a lot of uh, sustainability efforts and initiatives and programs uh, for, for decades now. We, we have a global food waste uh, program where we try to reduce uh, wastage uh, as well as reduce energy around the world. Um, and then we have just opened Rosa Sao Paulo, for example, which is uh, one of the largest uh, upcycling project in Brazil, in fact. And we're committed to within a year to achieve 100% uh, 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 renewable energy through uh, solar panels. Um, and hopefully to achieve uh, as a group uh, carbon neutrality uh, in the future. So sustainability is a, a very much a, a core pillar in our organization. Uh, we've been doing a lot, and, but we recognize that we need to do more uh, to, uh, to uh, help you know, sustain and protect the planet. You just mentioned Sao Paulo. Can you tell us where you're gonna be opening other properties over the next year? So beyond beyond Brazil, you mean? Yes, yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, so for Rose with the Bride, I mean, we, we've uh, announced about uh, 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 24 projects around the world. Yeah. Uh, next year is a very exciting year for us. Uh, we're opening a, a quite a few uh, uh, amazing projects. Uh, we're opening in Rosewood, Amsterdam. We're opening in Rosewood, Munich. Uh, we, we're opening our first uh, hotel in Hawaii, Kona Village. Um, uh, we're also venturing into Middle East and opening Rosa Doha as well. Uh, so very exciting openings in the in, in next year. Sounds like you're going to be racking up those frequent flyer miles, Sonia, right? <laughs> yes, hopefully. I think uh, uh, next year onwards, uh, the travel will be quite intense. All right. Final question. And I know you're not going to be able to answer this because this is like the same thing. Me asking you which one of your kids is your favorite kid. So I'm going to ask you, which one of your hotel properties is your favorite property? Or is there any way that you can maybe say that, well, something really sticks out in your mind that you kind of really dig? I, I mean, a lot of people ask me that question and I will give you, I really do not have a favorite. Uh, every uh, Rosewood property really have a special place in my heart. Uh, everyone has their own story, you know, from Rosewood, Hong Kong, which is uh, it, my home, my home city. Uh, I used to live in that area. So it has a special place in my heart to Rosewood, Beijing, which is our first hotel in uh, Asia to uh, uh, Hotel de Creon in Paris, which is a tremendous uh, landmark in Paris. And uh, so it, it, every, every property really has a, a amazing spot in my heart. So I can't really say who's the favorite. Well, you have the dozens of hotels and the four kids and you love them all. I can't blame you, you can't single any of them out. That makes sense, right? Exactly. Sonia Chang, CEO of Rosewood Hotel Group. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. You've been watching Influencers. I'm Andy Serwer. We'll see you next time.